So um, good morning, everyone. Uh, Sergio Valenzuela. Uh, today uh, we we have a slight change of uh, of the schedule. Uh, is uh, Stefan? So I'm the chairman, and uh, so please, if there is students, especially, uh, ask questions. So this is the aim of this uh, of these uh, tutorials. Um, I introduce Stefan Ross. Uh, he's the second tutorial that he's going to present. Um, okay, you can you can start. Can start. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, chairman, <laughs> for the kind words, kind introduction. It's a great, it's, it's a great sharing session. I create, yeah, I create so, a professor. Okay, good, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, yeah, my two lectures, final lecture will be packed. There will be a break in between, so I hope uh, that you will not uh, regret your presence here. Um, so the second lecture actually is, uh, is about moving towards, let's say, advanced concept in spin transfer, transport. Uh, there have been actually discussion yesterday, more sp specialized talk. Uh, here we try to cover a bit of history of this concept we are introduced and also um, illustrate further uh, their application to two dimensional materials. So, as for yesterday, I want to enter smoothly into the, the topic of uh, topological physics, let's say. Um, because it's uh, where everything started and inspired then the next uh, works. And, uh, and afterwards we will, we will look at more technical uh, aspects of uh, this spin transport phenomena in uh, graphene related materials. So, it turns out that about 40 years ago, uh, a young German researcher working in a French lab actually the, my birthplace, measured some uh, anomalous transport uh, features uh, in a two-dimensional electric gas under high magnetic field and low temperature. Indeed, uh, in contrast to what was expected from the classical point of view, classical low conductivity, uh, there were ranges of gate voltage where the longitudinal resistance was vanishing and concomitantly, the whole resistance was exhibiting a plateau, very well-defined plateau. So this was a complete surprise for Klaus. And it um, turned out that these uh, plateau values were related to the H bar, H bar. Okay. So immediately we enter into quantum physics when H bar is uh, showing up. And um, the beauty of this connection between uh, all resistance and uh, H-bar is that it's allowed to define a universal, let's say, quantum uh, resistance or quantum conductance value. And the plateau were given by series of plateau depending on an integer number. What is unbelievable is that the progress of measurements have achieved, had achieved an unprecedented precision of this quantum resistance, which is one part in 10 to the 10. So as a result, actually it was last uh, beyond uh, the Nobel laureate for this gigantic discovery. Uh, Klaus was very excited because last year um, the von Klitzin resistance became the new practical standard for electrical resistance, officially international. So Graphene actually has been also very uh, useful for moving forward quantum Hall effect up to room temperature, very low magnetic field. Yeah, there is a half integer quantum Hall effect related to pseudo spin. So, so Klaus was one of the promoter of the graphene flagship actually, because he also immediately realized that this material will offer new avenues for quantum Hall effect physics. So the new physics of quantum Hall effect 
was immediately uh, correlated, related to the interplay between the magnetic field, when you have high magnetic field, you have the formation of Landau levels, and the disorder and sample boundaries. And actually, with this sketch, what you, the sketch is, is about the connection between the formation of the plateaus and the existence of bulk versus edge states. So it was also realized after a couple of years of debate on the theory that this quantization of the whole uh, resistance of conductance was actually related to a, a very deep connection with the topology of the wave function in such a system. And my Tokomoto uh, derived, we, we wrote the whole Kubo formula in terms, in a way to express this topology. Topology which means that the wave the eigenstate have certain connection or you move in your magnetic boolean zone in a certain way and you can define a kind of topological quantities, the very curvature. And actually, uh, in such a system, uh, it turns out that the conductivity uh, will be related to an invariant, topological invariant of the spectrum. So, uh, known as a Chern number. So that was really a breakthrough. Uh, there is a famous paper, T, K, and N before, but, but Komoto was the person that pointed out this deep connection with topology. So, uh, let me say like 10 years, a no, few years later, 10 years later, a bit more, they something new entered into the game. And uh, this is a kind of chronological order, which was universal intrinsic spin-all effect. With this paper, where they were mentioning that they observed for uniform Rajba system, uh, the generation of a spin current, somehow. So, I will, I will come into the, uh, the arcanes of this paper and, uh, and the consequence, but I want to initially mention a second paper that is subsequent. subsequent. And it's a very important paper because it, I think it gave a very solid framework about what's going on actually in the system. Very, uh, more or less the same years, there is also this very interesting paper that maybe even the experts here, they don't remember, or except the ones that are giving lectures and something like that. And this paper is very interesting because it's also using intrinsic spin orbit coupling, Rajba spin orbit coupling, is discussing quantum spin orbit effects, or a new version. And um, it shows that it, or it can be robust to, Raj to Rajba, for instance, or disorder. What is surprising is it was a very fast uh, accepted paper actually submit six months after this milestone paper, which was an archive. And it took a long time for these people to, to make this paper published. But as you know, uh, this is uh, recognized by the community as, well as the foundation of the quantum spin all effect and the uh, topological insulator physics. So this, the model is, uh, was, was quite simple. It's just a graphene uh, nano ribbon. And uh, KNMLA just introduces this intrinsic uh, spin orbit coupling, spin conservative. And they found that in the presence of boundary, in for the case of the ribbon, they will get uh, breaking of the symmetry of the system and some edge state with this uh, uh, spin, spin polarized counter propagating edge state. So, <laughs> things that you can then measure somehow by two terminal or multi-terminal uh, conductance measurements. So the only problem at that point was that uh, the estimation of the intrinsic spin orbit coupling graphene was extremely low in the order of micro EV. And so, as you know, uh, you have to go to extremely low temperature to, to unveil such kind of physics. So as you know, historically, historically then the first experimental evidence uh, came from uh, Lawrence Mollenkamp in Salzburg. Uh, designing highly complex heterostructure structure between semi-metals and, and semiconductors to create interfaces where somehow uh, beauty of symmetries will invert the bounds and create those states at the boundaries. I'm not entering into the, the full technicality of this, but just historical perspective. 
So actually, the type of measurement that are made with the quantum spin all effect have some differences with the quantum all effect in the in the, in the point that the quantization here this is a two terminal, so it's two e square over h is two uh, spin polarized state, but the plateau is not well defined. I mean, it has not a high precision. It's a large error bar, and so the inner spin orbit coupling magnetic field that are generated this. Um, for some reason, they are not maybe translationally variant. This or is there, or whatever. It's it's not. It cannot be. It cannot replace, unfortunately, um, the quantum all effect to become a standard in a resistance because because this is not good enough. But it would be very good if you could avoid to have magnetic field. So as you maybe also know, the expert interested in topological insulator, there was a generalization of the Kenemele and full Kenemele to three dimension. It is a very interesting generic model, which includes this additional dimensionality. So we say symmetry is diamond cubic, so you can have a stack. And what happened in this is that instead of edge states, you have surface states that have these topological properties. So if you, for instance, look at uh, those states that are the surface states, and you project them in real space, um, you will get their localization. And if the stack is strong enough, they do not communicate, so there is no gap. The system is extremely robust. So that was also a, a milestone paper that was followed by the Su Zhang uh, proposal that this bismuth selenide, bismuth telluride, timony telluride would be appropriate material three-dimensional generalization. Uh, to observe this, uh, this uh, topological physics. <coughs> so this is a more a recent result about uh, evidence that in uh, two-dimensional uh, TMD, strong spin orbit copy materials, you have some indication of such type of uh, topological physics. But what I want to do now is to come back to, you know, two-dimensional materials, if heterostructure, graphene, uh, all these things, all this proximity effect can help generating this type of phenomena. Or can you imprint s uh, strong spin orbit coupling to graphene, for instance, to generate a very efficient quantum spin all effect or a spin all effect. And um, uh, these are illustration of two papers that actually sh sh evidence somehow that the the situation is highly complex. We have, been, we have seen yesterday that you put graphene on a TMD, and uh, depending on the, the type of TMD, you, you can have a very different strength of the imprint spin orbit coupling. This is an example where, actually, uh, for the same kind of material, actually, in one case, uh, there was a proposal that the measurement would be related to spin all effect, and in the other case, this is much more recent, this is a quantum spin all effect. So and this is derived based on the weak anti-localization analysis. So this, this is uh, not a, a very simple uh, issue to deal with. This is again a, a slide uh, important where it shows that when you put graphene on, on a TMD, you may be for a certain uh, uh, combination, uh, a situation which is exactly what we are interested in, this quantum spin on effect. So there is a point which is actually key is that if we want to connect topological physics with the experimental measurements, if we want to say, to claim that indeed what is measured uh, has something to do with a completely deep physics, deep topological physics, we need to, to deal with this non-local transport physics, which is um, not super intuitive. Maybe now it's kind of more established than before. But as you will see uh, you know, during my presentation, there are some controversies and some difficulties in going to the interpretation. <coughs> and I will, I will go into this uh, work we, we did with uh, Branislav. Well, actually, uh, we realized that by depositing atoms on top of graphene in order to in enhance the spin orbit coupling and to generate spin all effect, uh, that would be extremely different to have a device geometry um, where enhanced spin orbit coupling in along the channel or avoiding any spin orbit coupling source in inside the channel. And, uh, and actually, uh, this type of proposal have apparently uh, not inspired, I don't know if it's a bit too high, but motivate our colleague to, to design this type of different device geometry. And 
And as I was shown yesterday, actually, by, uh, by Juan, in the group of Sergio, and, um, and other groups, uh, evidences and quantification of spinal effect uh, could be achieved eventually. So let me start with the spinal effect, then we'll go to quantum spinal effect. Actually, there is no time here, so I'm handless. That's great. Ah, the chairman is, is in charge. Okay. So this is for Sergio. So we will let it a couple of times. You know, and we are from Barcelona, so you know we are one of our we're very proud to be in Barcelona and to have an Argentinian that is uh, scoring so many goals. But actually, this is not the point. The point is that when I was asking Sergio, Sergio, explain me what is the spinal effect. <laughs> You're the person who can explain. I was just like a beginner. I have no idea what's, what's, what's there. And he said, think about Messi or Ronaldo and look at all the, look at the trajectory of the goal. <laughs> this is more or less the same. No, more or less, because see, that's a bit, uh, that can be uh, misleading. Uh, the Magnus effect and uh, can give an idea about you go in a direction, but finally you move in another direction. So. <coughs> Interestingly, this, uh, this phenomenon was introduced uh, long ago uh, in the system without any external magnetic field, but however, uh, only spin orbit coupling could create or separate uh, spin opposite spin population. So by driving a, a, a current, then this type of spin accumulation at the edges will be generated in absence of any ferromagnet, in absence of, of any external magnetic field. So clearly, uh, thinking about uh, spintronic, uh, avoiding all this um, uh, complexity and especially external magnetic field is a, is a high value. So this is a bit my own understanding of some of the uh, controversy problems that I have, been, I have been influenced by several people. But I understood that uh, at the, uh, in the early days or so, the proposal that the phenomena could be actually emerge really from an intrinsic electronic structure and spin texture of the, of the materials was very exciting and, uh, and quite, at the start, difficult to figure out. So there was discussion uh, about, about this, and I will come back on that. Fortunately, um, after some maybe optical uh, evidence of spinal effect, uh, this gentleman uh, gave the uh, unambiguous demonstration that you could electrically read out by this inverse spinal effect the, the mechanism. So that was a major uh, breakthrough for the, for the field. So as I said, the initial prediction was like you have a mechanism that can generate this separation of spin population, which, is, uh, which has been so reviewed uh, in 99. When you have an impurity, the spin, or spin orbit, spin dependent scattering will move one left, uh, up, down. And but this mechanism is, is very interesting because uh, at start it was showing some maybe some deep connection with the uh, with the bond structure and maybe some kind of analogy with the, the quantum Hall effect that something uh, the bond structure is driving an universality in the transport. So the ex extrinsic spinal effect is actually uh, more s simple to picture like, like that and uh, to, to understand all this actually happening. So imagine that you have the electrons with a certain spin moving uh, nearby a, a scatter, which charge, which have a certain potential. And so it will exert uh, an attraction, an electric field, which is a space dependence on the electron. <coughs> But this electron will be deviated because corresponding to this electric field, there is a inhomogeneous or so a magnetic field which exerts a force on the electron which is dependent on the spin direction. So one way we got this, and the other way would be deflected the opposite direction. So that's the basic picture for, for the extraction spin all effect. Now for the intrinsic speed all effect, uh, we have to start again with this uh, bond structure and this specific spin texture that has been uh, I showed in the first in the first presentation, and uh, which uh, allows to define this uh, momentum dependent uh, Rajba um, effective magnetic field. So when you think about the transport measurements, so you have an electric field, and this electric field makes your uh, system of motion equation time dependent. So this, this uh, effective magnetic field is also becoming time dependent. And if you solve this equation, actually you will see that there is a, 
um, spin, the spin is tilting out of the plane. Okay, so that you can you will compute the time, evolu time evolution of the z component, component, and you will see that it will it will become uh, uh, positive and depending on this uh, evolution. So, in addition, this peak component, this expectation value is is uh, depending on the sign of the ky. So, for spin up or spin down, you will have uh, this separation to the y direction. So. <coughs> assigned to this spin current that is generated transversely to the charge current, uh, you can uh, define a spin hole conductivity, which will be the proportional coefficient between uh, spin current and the charge current that you, to you generate initially. And there is an, an important, uh, let's say, vectorial <coughs> correlation between these three main quantities, that if you have charge current and you generate a spin current, then you have your spin polarization that is related to the cross product. One important uh, figure of merit of this phenomena is this uh, spin on angle that tells you how much spin current you generate for a certain charge current. So this is an important uh, value because it quantifies the efficiency of the phenomena. <coughs> so the people that derived this initially with the rash bar, homogeneous rash bar, and uh, let's say uh, uh, parabolic bounds, they um, were a bit fast, but they end up with, uh, with a, a kind of value of the, this uh, spin hole conductivity that was a, a kind of invariant, I mean, a constant variant. So that was an uh, interesting point. But um, soon it was realized that uh, if you put a tiny amount of disorder, <coughs> then uh, in an homogeneous rash bar, then you get uh, the system to be absolutely not responsive and, and the spin hole conductivity is e exactly zero. What was a bit uh, kind of problem? Actually, the problem was uh, happened to be related to the fact that uh, the rash bar spin orbit coupling uh, do not preserve spin. It's not so that caused a problem. Uh, even a problem to define, uh, so spin current is not conserved, so there is no continuity equation. So then um, by doing this kind of treatment, um, uh, you expect that maybe there is a kind of problem in consistency or, or strange result. <coughs> so it comes the, the method that Branislav uh, developed, which is, uh, which is a non-equilibrium self-consistent uh, calculation of the spin transport into a non-local geometry. And, uh, and this calculation uh, was able to identify <coughs> in the presence of an homogeneous rash bar, uh, indeed the phenomena of uh, spin uh, separation, but also its, uh, its limited capability based on the decoherence of the structure. <coughs> so now <coughs> let's come with the, the main uh, figure of marine we are interested in and we want to optimize in uh, in the technology, so as I say, this this is a conversion. So let's say a charge to spin conversion uh, figure of merit, which tells you. I mean, if it's zero, obviously you have no spin current. If it's maximum, you have what you searching for. So in the experiment, the estimate usually this number is extremely small, <coughs> below one, and. Um, one of the initial uh, approach, uh, let's say the extrinsic spin hole effect, was to relate this uh, spin hole angle. So it's, it's a relation of the current, so you can extract this as a function of the uh, conductivity and the electric field. So it's equivalent to have a, a ratio between spin hole conductivity and the dissipative, dissipative conductivity. So there have been in the literature, this is a report where measuring the mobility, the conductivity, and um, the spin signal, um, they, they can figure out what is the strength of a given materials to generate this type of material. So for the extrinsic spin hole effect, it seems to be not problematic to use this formula because you have a lot of scattering and scattering generate this, this phenomena. However, for the intrinsic spin hole effect, uh, using this type of uh, ratio, it, it causes a certain uh, level of inconfidence 
because actually mm, this system can be very disconnected from, I mean, the source of scattering can be different and you don't really know in the experiment. And if you take this going to zero, the, the spinal angle will virtually go to a very large value. But if it's not related to a spin dependent mechanism, it's kind of um, incorrect. So <coughs> I will explain what, what is the, <laughs> the way to evaluate the spinal angle in this situation. But first of all, let me mention that when you are in this situation where you can principle uh, consider the system will be um, not in a purely ballistic regime, you, you can make an estimation of the spinal angle by, by making this calculation. And this is an approach that will be, let's say, a bulk approach. So you can do this or say, uh, for, for instance, the graphene bound structure, which is simple. You can, you can evaluate this uh, analytically, actually. So you can check your numerical implementation uh, towards this analytical result. And then numerically, you can put this order. You can make your rash by spin orbit cop coupling field non-homogeneous. Uh, uh, and what you find is that you always get some, some kind of finite value of the spinal conductivity. So it's not uh, disappearing with disorder. It's just like the, if you have more complex source of, of spin orbit coupling field or disorder, then you get some, some value. But in the case where the system will become extremely clean and that will be very difficult to, to think about any transport coefficient, let's say, then there is another uh, direct way to extract the, the spinal angle, which is really based on the definition that you have a charge current, and then you measure non-local voltage, which is generated by this uh, phenomenon. So this is directly the ratio of the current that are um, generated in the system. And you can use the multi-terminal lambda orbit ticker formalism to compute these two quantities. And this is a method that has been uh, developed by Branislav, and it's now uh, very uh, efficient. So now I'm coming to this, um, uh, let's say, result where the idea is really to enhance spin orbit coupling I in graphene in order to generate this phenomenon. So there have been a series of, of uh, proposal, uh, different type of increasing spin orbit coupling by introducing sp2 sp3 defect uh, iris was mentioning this create gigantic local spin orbit coupling or depositing um, metal atoms and, uh, and and in this work uh, the estimation of the of spinal angle actually was uh, extremely encouraging because very very large value uh, somehow tunable with uh, with a gate and assigned to an, a gigantic uh, enhancement of the spin orbit coupling locally and uh, the type of uh, ULT effects. The deposi depositing uh, atoms on top of graphene has been uh, also uh, investigated by ARPES and, and indeed the uh, experiments confirmed that an atom, a gold atom on top of graphene is generating a gigantic uh, Rajba spin orbit coupling. Um, so, but after some time, uh, people try to reproduce and we get some kind of uh, disagreement. The devices are extremely complicated, but uh, there was uh, some complexity in, in, in the analysis. And this work of Michael Furrer, for instance, putting gold or other type of atoms could not, uh, could not absolutely measure any spin dependent signal. Another observation is that uh, if you put for this ad atom uh, in physics option somehow, is that it's, uh, it's unlikely that you will have an homogeneous uh, distribution of, of these atoms so they will clusterize. So that creates a situation which is interesting where, where locally you may have a strong enhancements of the spin orbit coupling, but, but you have a kind of hybrid uh, materials, like a patchwork of this type of, of um, strongly spin orbit coupling enhanced and absolutely no, no spin orbit coupling. So what we, we did uh, in this work with, with again, a strong collaboration with, with Branislav and, and Xavier Vantal in, in Grenoble, is we tried to really study the same problem with these two different approaches, two different perspectives, given that we had somehow uh, 
we wanted to connect with the experiment, we made um, the analysis of the spinal angle by assuming by, by using these two different um, methods. Uh, the modeling of the impact of other atoms on top of graphene it actually was actually um, already proposed by, by some people with DFT based materials, so you have to extract some spin orbit coupling type panning model. Again, you can, by tuning the density, you can adjust and, and even compare with the experiment, uh, experimental data. And so, with the first approach, we looked at the spin hole conductivity, uh, the strength, and also how the clusterization will, will eventually uh, affect this transport coefficient. And let's say the most interesting slide is all the spin hole angle can be actually tuned with the energy or the gate voltage and how it is changed by changing the morphology of the of the spin orbit coupling field. So we see some differences which are related also to the it depends on the energy related to the, the this this morphologies but we, we get a number which is mm, high number for this fifteen percent density of an atoms we deposit and um, but these numbers actually were quite far from the so-called dilute limit. Um, anyhow, uh, this kind of shape and this resonance of the spinal angle actually a very interesting uh, feature that was uh, actually uh, already uh, described in depth by, by Iris and co-workers um, in this regime of, of uh, skew scattering and they were explaining why you have a very strong resonant mechanism that, that maximizes the phenomenon. So it's really strongly energy dependent. So ne next, uh, we went to the evaluation of the same spin hole angle, but th then with this additional, this different approach. Okay. So where we compute the non-local resistance uh, on this system. So this is a non-local resistance. This is the evaluation of the spinal angle for um, room temperature or low temperature, uh, clustered, scattered. So again, we got this resonance type of s uh, signal. We get values, uh, maximum values similar than the Kubo and the, the experimental values. But then we, uh, we thought that maybe we have to confirm that these are really spin-dependent signal and not something weird is happening actually. So the way to do that was to repeat the calculation um, by switching off the spin orbit coupling strength. Okay. And this is actually the result when we switch off the spin orbit coupling strength compared to the, the initial calculation. And you see we still get a signal. Actually, we still get a signal uh, regardless the presence of spin orbit coupling induced by the atoms. So that was a very uh, interesting, puzzling but interesting uh, feature that we analyzed. And we found that uh, uh, in such kind of configuration, actually, you will have additional contribution to this non-local signal that indeed have nothing to do with the spin uh, degree of freedom. Okay. I will not enter into the, the full detail uh, because it depends in our simulation of the length of the channel. So there are several types of contribution that uh, comes into play, direct handling, uh, pseudo-diffusive scattering, uh, and, and so forth. But at the end of the day, uh, as I said initially, this was uh, inspiring to find the geometry where we could minimize all this additional uh, contribution to the non-local resistance. So we could end up, again, with a spinal angle in a device geometry that was different, which was, again, large, um, and so promising somehow. So now, uh, the question, of course, is that depositing this ad atom uh, is uh, not really um, you know, practical, because as, as I mentioned, you know, you segregate, it would probably not be very stable at room temperature and so forth. So come back to the to the proximity effect when, when you can control the uh, deposition of graphene on top of a strong spin orbit coupling material, then you are in the best situation to generate uh, such type of phenomena. So again, I'm, uh, I'm uh, pointing out the work of Ahmed because I'm trying to uh, 
show the, the picture of all the people that appear in my talk. And um, so this was very interesting. Uh, was showing clearly that uh, because of the deposition of, of uh, TMDs, the spin was was relaxed, and there was some signal in the in the non-local resistance. Uh, but as far as I remember, it was difficult to estimate to quantify the strength of the spin on angle. So for such a situation, it's a bit like uh, the question: What um, kind of contribution do we expect? Um, do we have, like, like the Rajba, let's say, uh, the simple 2D Rajba, a combination of intrinsic mechanism that will drive the, the phenomenon, and to which extent the defect into this, um, you know, for instance, in the TMDs, it's will, it is known that there are a lot of densities of impurities, vacancy uh, stuff. All these additional mechanisms contribute to, to the signal. So kind of complex situation. So what I show is just some of the results we, we got by, for the moment, discarding uh, the inhomogeneity of a spin orbit coupling field, which has to be taken into account at some point, but it's computationally heavy, and you have to, if you want to do it uh, in a realistic way, you need to have a, a good DFT calculation of, uh, of those kind of defect, and it turned out to be a kind of nightmare. So the simulation I'm showing is just, again, considering the type of puddle that can be measured uh, by this uh, skate uh, gating, uh, sc uh, sc scanning gate microscopy. So you can, you can probe the, the fluctuation of the local charge density. So we know more or less what is the strength for the graphene on top of TMDs. And, and we have, again, all the models de derived by, by Yaroslav uh, Martin to um, take into account the imprinted spin orbit coupling on graphene. So this is a result that was made by Jose Garcia and my group. Well actually, uh, we show the spin hole conductivity as a function of the energy for different type of interface between graphene and, and different type of TMDs for a certain stacking symmetry, which of course you could uh, play uh, with the different symmetries in, in at the interface, and, and this is a very uh, you know, extensive work to do. Anyhow, this uh, calculation uh, suggested that uh, there will be large differences. There are large differences in terms of the strengths of the spin orbit coupling, the terms that dominate for a given uh, a TMD, uh, and this will result in, in some weak, very weak signal on the spin orbit conductivity or a very large signal based on this calculation, right? So uh, at that point, we make some uh, additional approximation that the disorder is not spin uh, dependent. And we look at two different cases. The case where actually you have a lot of scattering which uh, um, make your, your state moving from valley to valley. So this would be the strong inter-valley scattering case. And the case was interface is cleaner, and so you you have maybe some scattering, but it's it's uh, it's provoke it's only intra valley scattering process, and and there is no um, let's say mean free pass remains very long. So the difference between between these two cases is basically that uh, this situation can uh, uh, afford to measure some I mean calculate some sizable uh, spinal angle whether the contribution of intervalle scattering will result in a disappearance of any spin signal, which is somehow makes sense because this situation is the one that will favor this uh, intrinsic uh, phenomenon. Actually, uh, I, will, I will not uh, enter into detail, but we also uh, uh, remember in the presentation of yesterday, uh, we found that uh, a giant uh, spin transport anisotropy was taking place, but actually, uh, actually in the opposite situation, when we have a very strong intervalle coupling, where there are the absence of the intervalle coupling will generate um, a conventional Rajba type of spin transport anisotropy. And um, let me see, yeah. So one observation before I mention this experiment is that actually this type of prediction 
the coexistence of weak anti-localization together with uh, giant spin transport and exotropy, but no spinal effect. And the coexist, I mean, the existence of spinal effect in absence of interval scattering and conventional rash bar type. Uh, spin transport and isotropy is not c confirmed by the experience. Correct? German? You say yes, okay. So there, is, there are more rooms at the bottom, and more doors to open, and more things to do. Anyhow, um, this is this year, right? in 2019, I think, uh, there have been three reports, so following the proposal and the reports of, of uh, Ahmet and uh, Barbaros and co-workers, uh, where, where this geometry of the device was modified, where the proximity effect was confined to part of the, of the device, and where some um, signature of, of a spinal effect uh, have been reported. Uh, in this case, uh, the estimation of the spinal angle was also made as a function of temperature, so it was decreasing, it's quite high also at very low temperature. And the, the, the other two uh, have been actually mentioned yesterday by, by Juan. And, um, and I would insist on this one, not only because I'm uh, co-authors, but because, as Juan said yesterday, um, we have a kind of very interesting confirmation that this spin hall effect is tunable with gate. As I said, the simulation was showing that, but here it showed. It shows that the signal is actually tunable by the by the gate, uh, so it's very sensitive to the inner, um, you know, details of the bond structure of the scattering uh, phenomena, resonance, and so forth. And uh, we have the quantification of the of the spinal angle at room temperature. And actually, this is a very encouraging uh, result because it's it shows that we can move on. I mean, that's a, that's a sizable, that's a sizable signal figure of merit, and it's at room temperature, and um, and I don't remember if it's on CVD graphene. No, it's exfoliated, but probably that doesn't make a big difference. So that's that's really a milestone in the sense that after all this, um, all these efforts of the community, um, I think this s stimulate further consideration, and uh, not only by, by, because there are open questions, but also from the experimental perspective and even moving forwards for application. Okay, so, going to the quantum all effect, so, I'm, uh, quantum spin all effect, so I, I made some kind of quick um, uh, historical perspective, and pointing out some uh, essential concept. So, as you know, this work generates a lot of excitement, but actually, for long, people have concentrated on, on materials that you can really measure. And here, uh, measuring the, uh, having the gap so small was very prohibitive to confirm that this phenomenon was in actually in place. So there was a um, proposal from the theoretical side that what you have to do is just to keep the same kind of geometry, but you enhance your spin orbit coupling, especially with L atom, that will generate a very strong intrinsic spin orbit coupling, so which also break the AB symmetry. Uh, and then you have this gap that becomes much larger, like orders of magnitude larger. And it's in the case of thallium that nobody wants to use in the, la in the lab, but you, know, you get like 21 milli electron volts. So, uh, one of the question is, okay, uh, maybe we can we can look at the effect of this uh, heavy ad atom uh, on the on graphene, and can we generate uh, some uh, quantum spin all effect? Right. So again, we have the same. We have been looking at the same story that this ad atom we clusterized, and uh, and we have to, to to deal with a material that is very different actually from this situation, and it's very different because. If you can generate in an uniform distribution a gap of 20 milli electron volts, so and if you uh, have this kind of hybridization between zone where you have absolutely no spin orbit coupling and cluster underneath the graphene, where you have an open or a band, band gap, local band gap, then you have kind of a bulk situation of, let's say, the homogeneous uh, situation with edges, 
So you have edges in the bulk because underneath this island, there is a gap. And there is a connection between this gapped region with the ungapped, okay, Dirac uh, situation. So you, what happens is actually you will create chiral edge state around the island. Well, kind of uh, interesting because you kind of recombine as you know, edge physics with the bulk perspective. And this is a picture I will show. I will show the all things are actually emerging when you change the density and then the size of those clusters. But this is a picture where uh, we look at the chirality of the current, spin-dependent current. So if you inject uh, downspin or upspin, your, your current will circulate around those islands and will percolate from island to island. So again, um, there's a need to, uh, to elaborate a model that is uh, as much realistic as possible. And this was uh, also done by the people I mentioned before. And uh, in the case of an homo homogeneous distribution of the atom, you uh, expect to have the opening of a real translational invariant somehow bound gap in which you, you will get a full quantization of the conductance, okay? So what I'm showing now is what happens when you make your anatoms clusterizing. So this is the first example. We are exactly in the situation where the density is so large that you have your two terminal and you have your, your plateau. And if you look at the uh, spin uh, dependent current, you see that if you inject it, uh, the up will go top and on the down it will go on the bottom size of the, of the sample. This is exactly the situation of these two uh, polarized states related to these two channels. If you look at the spin polarization of the edges, you will be exactly also showing the same thing, basically. So now, yeah, sorry. So there's two pictures underneath there. Uh, that do, are they representing the one on top? Uh, yeah, we don't show we don't show the exactly we don't show the the atom here. Uh, we just show the, the the current spin dependent current map. So I want to know what happens at the interface between the source and the region, the two dag. Yeah, are there edge states there? Yeah, what happens is we certainly uh, we have doped the contact, so we don't inject from graphene to uh, this uh, atom functionalized graphene, but we inject like from a high density of state leads to this situation. So we don't have uh, uh, H state. I don't so, think so. Th then th th this uh, circulating current that you're showing underneath is not really representing ah the region. Ah, you mean, okay, this, this. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, maybe possible, yes, yes. So maybe because there, in principle, you have a high you know, if it's metallic, yeah. you know, yeah, so, yeah. and then the picture to the right then is not really the sum of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Correct. So the simulation gives that? Yeah, probably, yeah, because the current, the way you, you picture current uh, and the way you picture the, the spin density is, uh, is a bit different. But, but let's say, I, I agree. Probably like what we see here is, is related in the modeling with this presence of the edges. Correct. Okay. So, um, somehow, there is one paper that I've mentioned before was interesting because they, they were looking also at the, at the uh, spin hole conductivity and, and the presence of this gap and this uh, quantized um, uh, quantum spin hole effect regime and uh, the impact of disorder of additional uh, Rajba type of spin orbit coupling and things like that. So, so in this work is actually uh, an interesting uh, numerical study also which which is connected with what we what we show somehow you know in this work so now let me show what happened if we mm, force the atoms to to clusterize making this highland uh, larger and larger for the exactly the same density of of uh, atom on top so you see that you have a certain degree of uh, redistribution that although some the g probably the bound gap is modified on a global scale, it, it maintains this uh, spin polarized current. But eventually, at some point, uh, this formation of, of, of island uh, is, uh, 
shown to break the existence of the, of the plateau. So I think that this is a kind of probably a, a generic result that also mm, illustrates what we see in the experiment. Well, it's very unlikely that uh, the system, this material that are created with strong spin orbit coupling are completely translational invariant. They are the source of disorder which locally break the spin orbit coupling field. And so they can reflect in this uh, disappearance or non-robustness of the topological state. So the more you increase and the, the more you depart from from this uh, situation, obviously. So let me show you what happened about this uh, bulk current when we are in the situation where we can say somehow that mm, it seems we are far from the quantum spinal effect because it's not really the, the ideal situation. But as I mentioned before, uh, when we look again at the, uh, the spin dependent uh, current in real space, we have contribution from the bulk and see here there is a kind of coexistence between uh, spin accumulation at the edges. Okay. So this conductance um, reflects both. It reflects this chirality, uh, bulk driven chirality, which in some circumstances also drives the, the spin current eventually, the spin accumulation at the edges. So it's um, it's a situation where somehow uh, can be connected with um, the calculation of the spin hole angle. And uh, here I show what will be, uh, what are the results for this, exactly this thallium atoms with a strong um, intrinsic spin orbit coupling term. And we see actually uh, in our simulation that mm, compared to gold, the, the signal uh, globally, let's say, if we make an average, will be much enhanced compared to a Rajba type of signal for spinal angle. And it's, it's a bulk effect, so we can speak about spinal effect. Now this is another situation where we have completely, you know, even larger uh, cluster, and, uh, and in that situation there is absolutely no spin accumulation at the edge due to this in, in, uh, in intrinsic scattering. However, this chirality is still there, this chirality of the bulk current. So one, one question, one question was, do, is, there, is there any signature of this chiral bulk current okay, that are related to the very specific situation of an hybrid system with this inhomogeneous distribution of the local gap and stuff? So what we show here is a result of the quantum conductivity for a situation with 15% uh, of an atom. We, we kind of relax a bit the, the size of the, of the cluster. And we add an extra disorder on graphene, the kind of puddles. If we put this on a substrate, you will have um, silicon oxide, for instance, you will have uh, strong scattering generated by puddles. So there is no topological gap. We have really a bulk. But what we see is that the value of the conductivity, quantum conductivity at the Fermi, the Dirac point, is 4 square over H, okay? so which has been also measured in very clean graphene. But what is very interesting is what when we increase the strength of the um, scattering uh, of the puddles, we're increasing the, the scattering strength of the puddle, we see that the conductivity is decaying everywhere except at the Dirac point. And at the Dirac point, this value remains 4 square of H. It's insensitive to uh, additional disorder. So and it's completely related to the presence of spin orbit coupling and the opening of the gap underneath the cluster. Because if we switch off the spin orbit coupling parameters underneath the, the island, well, but we keep the some kind of local charge transfer and some scattering potential, then we will recover some localization. So even here, the conductance will eventually uh, decay to zero because of localization, quantum interferences and localization. But as soon as we switch on spin orbit coupling term, then this diffusion coefficient as a function of time is completely flat. So this is total absence of um, localization effect exactly at the direct point. So it's kind of uh, very uh, interesting because it's a bulk uh, quantum transport phenomena, which is uh, which develops in a system with a, there are a lot of inhomogeneities. 
And, um, and as I will show for the value of effect, maybe some kind of similar uh, phenomena can, uh, can appear. Okay, I just point out that an experiment uh, made by some colleague in France actually in evap evaporating indium, uh, ultra vacuum and graphene and things like that, they actually found some um, signature that was very, very similar to the, the simulation, but that was published before and there was no interpretation and we don't know if this is correct. Okay. I want to finish with uh, mentioning another proximity effect because this is, I think it's, it's very debated today. Um, there is another way to size the, the imprint spin orbit coupling in graphene by a strong spin orbit coupling material, which is looking at the weak anti-localization. Okay. So weak, anti weak localization, weak anti-localization is, uh, is, a, is a correction of the classical uh, quantum con uh, classical conductivity because quantum particles propagating in the disorder uh, landscape uh, interference, the, uh, quantum interference and then this kind of increasing probability of return to zero gene, increasing localization. If you put a magnetic field, you release that, so you have a negative magnetic resistance, this is weak localization. If you have weak anti-localization, like observe in, most in all of the experiments uh, for graphene deposit on TMDs, it supposed that there is a strong spin orbit coupling uh, acting in graphene. And actually, in this work, uh, Bouchia and co-workers, they uh, fit their experiment with, uh, with an initial theory proposed for uh, metals, or generalized also for, for graphene, but, and the fit of their experimental conclude that the intrinsic spin orbit coupling K in melee is in the order of 10 milli electron volt, well, which is uh, enormous, and, and so the principle that you could measure the quantum spin all effect at sufficiently low temperature in this situation. Let me just skip this. However, uh, the problem is that this formula, so there was a lot of formula before, but this formula completely disregard uh, the valle zeeman effect. And it, also, uh, it is also derived without taking into account this additional uh, symmetry term, the symmetry spin orbit coupling term that participated to the localization effect, to the interference. So that's a real problem. And uh, but fortunately, the initial formula of Falco and, and McCain was developed for graphene, no spin orbit coupling, but pseudo spin uh, effect. So it was also weak anti-localization in certain circumstances in clean graphene. So there was a very re recent generalization of weak anti-localization theory, which take into account all the diagrams I just put here to uh, fancy. It was very complicated, very long work. But in this paper, you can find uh, all the spin orbit coupling terms, including to the general theory of cooperance and and weak anti-localization. So um, numerically, we can look at this phenomena, uh, and that's just an illustration to finish. Uh, we can compute the, the conductivity as a function of, let's say, length scale or phase coherence, if you, if you wish. So in the presence of strong uh, interval scattering, what we actually see is this weak uh, localization effect, so that instead of being saturated at its semi-classical value, the conductivity will decay when you accumulate the localization effect. And this contribution, this delta sigma, which is exactly the difference, is um, as a logarithm in scaling, which is what we expect in, in 2D. So now if we switch, uh, in this case, we don't have spin orbit coupling. So if we have spin orbit coupling, we expect that for the same uh, disorder, we will get additional phase and the, and the switch of the sign of this quantum correction. And this is uh, what we see here, the situation where uh, spin orbit coupling is switched on and we get a correction which is um, of opposite sign. The point is that, so this is for a cleaner situation and um, so this is for the situation where we have uh, spin orbit coupling included, but eventually, if we try to make the system cleaner and cleaner and we don't get the valley mixing, then we will be in a regime where no localization, no quantum interference can Stefan, be accessed. Stefan, so question. There is a limit. Yeah. 
So um, here, uh, the decoherence length you, you replace by the size of the system, or uh, what, how do you make a cutoff in, in your... Yeah, yeah, there is no inelastic yeah. source. It's just like the, 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 the longer the length in which our wave packet propagated, the, the larger number of interference are accumulating into the calculation. Okay. okay so, if, so, that's, so that's why then from the downscaling, uh, we can see all these downscale with uh, with the lengths and with the mean free pass. So I can I can make this. So uh, just like something that is uh, uh, not really achieved because um, weak anti-localization theory has been generalized for um, let's say all the type of spin orbit coupling fields, and we have a numerical tool w we could we could somehow uh, compare. And uh, but this is uh, it's not down. So I think uh, I'm finished today. Enfin, not today. Uh, this morning. <laughs> session. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Uh, questions? questions? Thank you, Stefan, for the Thank nice you. talk. So I'd like just to make a comment about the ad atom decoration and the possibility to observe a quantum spin